Yes. Yes. So uh, for those people wondering, so Matt I did the way he's doing a little Facebook ad about the place. Oh, me, 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 me. I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm thinking of like this old cartoon, tick me, oh, pick me. It's like, okay, I'm picking <laughs> you right now. Get started on the show. I want to be on your dodgeball team. That's right. <laughs> With laser and blazer. And I can't remember what the other like azer was, but yeah, it's just, just, yeah, I've been there. But once and again, it's Stephen Cannon, Matt Knowles. You guys are back for more. I must be doing something right. Yes, so, we are. Um, yes. Yes. So how's it going? Like so the last time I saw you guys was the last campaign. I No, I didn't see you guys really the last campaign. I saw you yeah, guys. It was last campaign. It was last campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, sure? It's, been, Are you yeah, sure? it's been a little bit of a gap between. It was the last campaign, campaign because, right. because when I signed into this and you're the only one we do on Restream and my yeah. name was TPP1 instead oh. of TPP2. So I was uh, like, dang, I'm like, we must have been on for that. So yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Oh, so there you go. So yeah, there you go. So that that's it. So. You guys have had a you guys have had a fun summer, or from what I can tell, anyways. Lots of traveling. An insane summer. <laughs> busy, busy for sure. Busy for sure. So what you got? So what was this based cons or everything, or just even more cool stuff? Well, yeah, it was for me, cons. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was cons. For Steph, she's yeah. got a much longer answer. <laughs> well, it was mostly cons. <laughs> there were some family trips in there too. Um, you know, I had my my annual sibling retreat because you know I've got a million siblings, but um. That's a whole other podcast, <laughs> but um, I, I, yeah, we did, and we did, and and, and really, uh, all the way up until a few weeks ago, because uh, at the beginning of October, we were at New York Comic Con, which was a first for us, which was a lot of fun. So, how was that? Because I've heard lots of good things about that con. It was crazy. It was yeah, it was insane. It was it's long days. You know, those big major cons, they're like it's ten hour days for four days, um, and it's exhausting and it's when it's that many people even when we're behind like the safety of our little table just the massive amounts of crowds you're just like oh my gosh there's only so much i can take even the most extroverted person is like wow i cannot handle this many people yeah it was it was crazy it was crazy i mean we knew it was going to be expensive being up there and being from Florida, being from an area that is not very expensive, when you decide that the best food option is to go to Starbucks and eat the, 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 the sandwiches from Starbucks, that that's your best option because of, of prices, you're like, okay, this is a weird area you're in. Um, the, the Javits Center, the food prices in there were akin to going to a sporting event. There was one day we got two Korean rice bowls and one drink. And it was 46 bucks. Yeah, I was like, yeah. we're like, wow, we're like, we're like <laughs> yeah. sticker shop. And I'm from California and that was still sticker shop for me. Yeah. After that, it was because before we went up there, stuff's like, I got to eat me a street dog. I got to get street dogs. I'm like, man, so I am not. If you're in New York, you got you to eat like a New Yorker. I'm like, I'm not eating that crap. I'm not getting a freaking street dog. I think we had dinner from the street dog thing like three times because we're like, <laughs> we're not spending 50 bucks on food. Let's go get two hot dogs for 15 bucks. What a steal. That did it come with gold, like little gold, like wrapping or ribbons? I or know, anything? right? Yeah, it, it, I'm like, it, it came with aluminum, aluminum. <laughs> 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 no, I know it. I, I have a bit of an idea what that's like because I've done. I long time ago, I did San Diego Comic Con, right? Just as even just as a visitor, the Very food much prices. Like that. Yeah, so it, yeah. I imagine it was, it'd be eerily the same thing. Oh yeah, and, be, and it's like this is San Diego East. And oh yeah, it, like, it absolutely is. And and crowd levels are are on par. They're about the same because I've done San Diego twice. And I remember walking through and, and just getting a little anxious. Just, you know, it's like I always liken it to like Disneyland on the busiest day that you've ever been. <laughs> That's what it's like. Yeah, <laughs> but it was fun. Like, we had a blast. Oh yeah. There's a couple of times where like, you know, I I said, Hey, I'll go to the Starbucks in there and get us a coffee or something like that. And there's a couple spots that were so busy that like I didn't have any choice about the path that I took to get back to where our booth was. I just kind of like, even though I'm a big dude, I just kind of had to like let the crowd kind of push me around and follow me around. There was like a, a 70 person queue just to get on the escalator. Um, and then Steph one day decides, she's like, Hey, you know that we were right where the morgue was in the, the Javits center. Right. I'm like, why do I want to know this? I'm like, I don't want to know we were in the morgue. I'm like, this is come on now. <laughs> 
It's a morbid yeah. thought, but I'm like, hey, you know, two years ago, the Javits Center was on the news for all the wrong reasons, unfortunately. And I'm like, yeah, the, the, way, the way the New York Comic Con is set up is Artist Alley is on like the bottom floor, almost like their basement. And then the show floor is a, is, is a floor above. And so, you know, you just can't help but think you're like, yeah, I remember hearing about this place on the news during the pandemic, but you know. So you see, so you trump, so you traumatized Matt, right? Like yep. right in the middle of that there. So now Matt's like, I can't unthink about Pretty normal. this now. <laughs> well, there was actually a cosplayer that died on the show floor. I didn't know about it when we were there. I had no clue that this actually happened, but there was actually, I think on Saturday at the top of one of the escalators, a dude just had a heart attack and died right there on the floor. And there was a lot of, a lot of talk about it because they said that some of the crowd didn't react very like well to it. They were like streaming it and taking pictures. I, I didn't know anything about this till we got yeah. home. I'm like, wow, that's just crazy I'm that this guy had this didn't. happen. I, I'm fifty. I, I'm torn on that because I, I again, I could almost see it, at least at first someone not buying it as or something real. I could actually see yeah. that. I yeah. could see. I I could see that. People I, are like, I, is this I, some sort of performance art or something? Yeah, because it, it is yeah. New York, right? It's it's one of yeah, the bigger exactly shows of right. the year. So you are, so by the time someone probably figured out something was really wrong, it was unfortunately probably too late. And that yeah, is a really yeah. depressing thought right in the middle of this. I know, right? <laughs> On to have your thoughts. <laughs> that you can actually, know I was, was going to be such a morbid I, 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 actually, tonight. What I was, was going to say, you did remind me of something. I, I lived in Windsor, Ontario. So one of the apartment buildings that my and my buddies used to live in, we used to be an old courthouse. So it was the jails, the judge, all that stuff was all in, still in this building in the basement floor. Kind of remind me of the same kind of creepy kind of vibe yeah. as what you're talking about. Yeah, you have to wonder what what happened in that area before you were there. Yeah, yeah. And then you think about it, it's like, well, that's the thing, right? Everywhere you go, things have happened, right? So it's just like exactly. you, try, you don't you don't think about it too much because you're in the now and. Maybe that's a good thing. Now let's get to yeah. that. Yeah, ignorance is bliss in this this regard. Yeah, I did want to ask. I just, I just before we move on to like talking about your comics and stuff like that, you said you had you go to a sibling thing. Where are you on the sibling realm of things? Like, are are you the oldest, middle, youngest? So I am, and I think right now it's still even. Um, I'm like the middle, and, and we joke about it now. I'm like I'm actually the middle child. <laughs> I'm like right in between. So. But um, we're, we're a unique story um, where I grew up an only child and then took a 23andMe test. I, I found out when I was 12 that I was donor conceived. And um, in 2019, I believe, I took a 23andMe test. I decided I was finally ready to see if there are any half brothers and sisters out there thinking that I would have like one or two. And um, now I have 15. <laughs> And we're all very close and we um, we've all almost all of us have met several times. In fact, I was just at a at a uh, 49ers game with one of my sisters a couple weekends ago. And um, we do an annual retreat where we pick a different place each year, uh, once on the East Coast and once on the West Coast, because we're all over the country. And um, but yeah, the, the big joke was that I discovered at one point, I'm like, mm. you know what, I am actually the middle child in this so that, you know. I can use that okay. as an excuse now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got that excuse now. I, I ended up yes. talking to I ended up talking to Marissa Mary about siblings. I was like, wait a minute, that that might not actually tie die into something there. That's yes. kind of cool. <laughs> so cool. That's, so you both football fans? I'm just kind of curious here. Yes, oh yes. This is that double. Yeah, you, you gotta forgive me. I'm Canadian. You gotta understand <laughs> for us it's hockey, right? But I do of like course, football. Of Yes, of course. Matt is um, probably the biggest football fan and sports fan I know. <laughs> so, but I'm, he's a lifelong Dolphins fan. I'm a lifelong Niners fan. So, you got a you know, shot this okay. year. Actually, you guys got a shot at facing each other in the Super Bowl this year. Well, we're facing each other in like four weeks in the regular yeah, season. Weeks. So we'll see what I'm happens then. So is there I'm like a bet between you two? Nope. I would love to see that happen because I would too. You know, we play fantasy football and it's like, you know, just, I mean, we're both competitive people, but I'm like, I don't want to like, I mean, I want to see her team do good. She wants to see my team do good. Um, why not? You know what I'm saying? It's not like she's a Bills fan and I'm a Dolphins fan or some oh kind gosh. of like hated rivalry yeah. or some nonsense like that. Fortunately, mm -hmm. the, our, our teams are like, they're, they're just kind of there for us. You know, they're not rivals or anything like well, that. But um, they're, if they're, we played each funny. other in the Super Bowl, that'd be the yeah, one time yeah. that if my team lost, I'd be... I'd be happy. I'd be okay because then I, he'd be happy. So it's okay. well. The one thing that's funny though too is that uh, the Dolphins' head coach this year was a coach on the 49ers yeah, last like year. Yeah, they're like trade players. 
So the <laughs> Dolphins just keep getting all these 49ers players. Yep. We just got another 49ers player yesterday. And so I'm like, there's times I'm like, oh, Trent Sherfield, he just had a great game. And she's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, another another 49ers player that's going to the Dolphins and doing good. And- like, enjoy my team's players, okay? <laughs> well, it, it, it's funny because, I like, they play very they play very similarly too. Like they actually have a similar style and it works. Yeah. And considering the trade deadline for Miami, they have a shot. Oh, I don't yeah. know. I, I, mm. I on a personal note, I do think it's Buffalo's time. Like this is just just my opinion. But well, you guys could upset the alpha cart. You do have the ability to do that. I'm not going to say you can't. Well, the, th- the thing that's interesting is you look at the the AFC and the Dolphins. I mean the 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 bills by far, I think are the best team, but the dolphins beat them. And I'm like, that doesn't even make any sense that we beat them the way that we did, but being able to get Bradley Chubb, one of my boys from NC state yesterday, I'm like, dolphins are making some moves. You never know what's going to happen. You're going all in. No, no, you're going, you're going all in. Like, and, and that's like I said, you have a shot this year. I just, again, and inner voice just says, I think it's Buffalo's time, but I, I mean, if anyone can upset the apple cart, it would, I actually would bet on you guys over Kansas City to beat them, right? So, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah the 49ers and it's a funny getting thing. Christian McCaffrey too, man. That's a big time yeah. move right there. Oh, no, yeah. there as well. Well, so and that's the cr- funny thing about it, you know, because everybody's saying you know Philadelphia is undefeated, and you know they they're they're going to be Super Bowl contenders, but every year inevitably the team that starts off this strong never ends up making it. So, I, um, I the Eagles are interesting. I think I, they have an easy schedule. That's the thing about it yeah. from here on yeah. in. They do have an easy schedule. I don't think they're a bad team. I think the problem they have is that I think their problem is they're, since they haven't, they're not going to be facing really good teams at their apex until the playoffs. Yeah. At this and point. that's when for they, maybe, that's... except for maybe Dallas. And um, right. And then Dallas and the Giants don't have the same offense that say, San Fran has or Seattle has. Seattle's the team I, in the in NFC. I'm like, holy crap, they might they might come out of nowhere here. But yeah, uh, Gino, Gino Smith is a quarterback. I'm like, come on now. Like that would be the <laughs> that'd be the weirdest Trent Dilfer-ish kind of you know thing it, except, of all time. With all the respect, he's playing better than Dilfer did. I mean, Dilfer was perfect for his team. Like Gino Smith's playing good this year. I, I again I I can't knock you can you, like can't he do, use the pass against him. Call spade a spade. He's doing really good. Yeah, he absolutely is. I mean, we all play fantasy football and, and Steph and I are in a league together and, you know, you got to go with the guys that are rocking and we have a guy in the league that's, that's rocking with Geno Smith as a quarterback. Hey, if he's yeah. putting the stats up, he's putting the stats up. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, but okay, so hopefully you guys get Miami San Fran. I, 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 I'm doing a, so I don't know if you guys know Rodney Fike. Me and yep. him are doing like a foot. We and him are doing like we did a football preview on the podcast, and we're going to be doing another one on uh, his show next week. So we're talking about what we were right and what we were wrong on. So, oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, do something Fun. a little different. Yeah. Do something a little different on the show. But I mean, ultimately, we are here to talk about some kind of funny books. By the way, thank um, for those people listening. Uh, Harris Vist is a really, really fun book. Even the, like, like, like the early stuff you guys showed, guys, it was good stuff. It was really good Thanks. stuff. Yeah. Did you so, get a chance to watch the campaign video for the uh, for the second? Um, I, I have no. Okay, up until up until literally two days until today, I was working on two different shows like projects. So I'm oh, I can okay. find yeah. So I haven't had a chance cool. to look. Although I've been seeing some of your stuff, it looks really like well, you if, guys. If, I, if you're having a rough day and you need a chance to smile, it's silly. You're probably <laughs> gonna want to go watch the campaign video we're silly. for this one. Yeah. There's well, yeah. Well, no, I know. See, I know you're silly. It's like, like the zombie thing was the thing that made me laugh the most because so they did a there was a zombie thing like most likely to trip and fall during the zombie apocalypse and it, I think Steph actually hit that by yes. like, it's like I'm like well the funny thing is is I am very clumsy and accident prone but it was just funny that like because it, it's totally randomized right and it, yeah. was, it was funny that my name came up with Rennie because I'm like you know I mean you know <laughs> so like they know you or something. I know yeah. the algorithm yeah. knows me, which is a little creepy when we think about it. Speaking of yes. zombies. <laughs> well, it's like, I'm on here too much. I'm on Facebook too much. And sometimes yeah. I think that. Sometimes I legitimately I, that's think that. probably what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> you don't know me. Wait, you do. Yeah. I'm on here too <laughs> Wait, much. I guess you gotta do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I see her on show 880. I'm like, man, that's, uh, that's, that's, 
getting pretty intense right That's there. That's impressive. A lot of dang shows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, here. Oh, so do you guys kind of want to hear the master plan for next year? So yeah, why don't you tell us the master plan for next year? What is the master plan? So I, I'm going to break 900 before the year's up. So from 900 to a thousand, I want to do like kind of like a like a mix. I don't know what the mix exactly is going to be, but what I'm trying to do is I bring back all the like guests. My 999th episode has already been booked, and it's actually my very first guest. Right, I'm oh, going nice. for some, yeah. It's my very very first guest oh, on the that's show. Oh, cool. Act, yeah, that's so I'm doing cool. so I'm doing that. I want to actually get some of the older guests, like because the show has evolved quite a bit since the very beginning. So. And then when I break a thousand, it'll be about May. And then so from May, so I might not be like right at a thousand. It might be like a thousand ten. It might be a thousand five. It might be a thousand like thirteen. Some weird number like that. But then I'm gonna go on the road. And then I'm gonna actually take the show on the road. I have this really crazy idea of like doing like a weird ice cream and Bailey's kind of show where I maybe I go to wherever you guys are at. It's like, hey, you want to eat ice cream and drink booze and talk on the on air live? that's that's yeah. awesome that's really yeah cool. yeah i want to do that like i'm ready for, i'm it's next up for the show so i'm going to be going on the road uh probably when the summer hits next year so cool. it w w would you guys like it if i hung out with you guys so and actually in person at some point yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. So maybe, maybe it'll be yeah. coincide with the time i'm in florida because i'm in florida a lot and then yeah, we'll, we can, we'll, we'll see what the logistics are for sure man yeah, no, totally. Like, I, I got some, I got some crazy, I got some crazy plans for next year for that That's regard. Awesome. And that, yeah. So you're gonna see kind of like a great, a greatest of going back to the beginning roots next early next year. But then, like when I go, it's gonna be something completely different. So That's my master plan. How about you guys? It, like, it seems like you guys are getting bigger. Like, we're does trying. That make sense? We're trying. Yeah. Certainly trying. Yeah. Yeah. So like, so I guess I'm going to ask this before we get into like the heart moves of this current Kickstarter is, so how about like, again, considering I looked a little bit more into your background, Miss Steph, because some things that were mentioned last time, it was like, you got a lot of interesting, you have an interesting history and connections in a lot of interesting places with everything you're developing, both of you and, and Matt, obviously you do too. Like we've talked a little bit about yours in, in previous episodes, but um I'm just wondering, like, like where do you guys want to take this beyond the comics? I feel like it. I feel like you guys have, if nothing else, if I'm noticing you guys, I'm sure other people are too, <laughs> right? So we're hoping, we're hoping. Well, one yeah. of the reasons why we, when we formed our LLC in Symmetry Creations, we said we want to be called in Symmetry Creations, not in Symmetry Comics. Not that yes. we're aren't always going to be in comics. I'm sure in some way, shape, or form. But we didn't want to limit ourselves to just one thing. We knew that right from the get-go that we wanted to be in all sorts of different media. And um, we're already doing that, but of course we want to do more. I mean, obviously, if Netflix came calling and said, you know, offered us a deal, <laughs> that would be amazing. But the chances of that happening aren't, you know, on its own, aren't likely. But the goal is, you know, we want our hands in as many entertainment pots as possible, if that means, you know, TV and movies or, you know, uh, board games or you know role playing games. I, I see. see I, I I I could totally see games with what you guys are doing. Yeah. Like yeah. Totally. One of the one of our one of our big mantras is we want to create characters people can relate to and universes people want to escape into. And right off the bat, part of the easy thing for it to be in Symmetry Creations was we already had the metal music side, so you already had the music, you had the comics and the writing, so we knew that we were always going to be a little bit bigger than just just comics. And um, yeah, we, we have plans and thoughts about getting into whatever, whatever areas, whatever mediums our IPs will take us. Um, if it means slightly restructuring an IP, if it's an Heirs of a Sealed or Tales from Nocturnia, slightly restructuring it so it makes sense in a specific uh, medium, then we'll do that. Um, as long as people are having fun with it, as long as people feel like they can get an escape and they can enjoy being in that realm, whether it be a board game, video game, card game, who cares? Whatever it is, if people can enjoy it, then we want to be a part of it. Okay, so I now maybe you can't answer this one because it might be into that we can't talk about this for uh, reasons. But is there like a is there like um, uh, a bucket list of where you would love to see your your properties actually hit? I don't think that it's a. I don't think it's any secret. We'd love to be able to see some form of gaming. Mm -hmm. We'd love to be able to see 
certain forms of merchandise we've already do like even with this campaign which we'll talk about later we've got branded merchandise that is is not comic based mm -hmm. um you know we would love to be able to see just progression i mean i i don't think and steph correct me if i'm wrong i don't think we sit down every day and go okay we're one step closer to netflix or we're one step closer to x we just say are yeah, we I mean, one yeah are we one it, step closer every day to getting it more open to be able to expand into whatever the next thing is whatever that next thing would be and just you know constantly moving forward although i will say that uh with airs our steampunk time travel series which is the you know one of the story that's what our kickstarter is for I really see it as a TV show. Uh, I mean, that doesn't mean that I think it'll ever happen. I mean, if it does, it'd be amazing. But that was one of the things that drew me to the series to begin with because Matt created it. Um, and then I came along and we now co-write it. Uh, I, I saw it that way from the get-go. And so, I, and we've had a lot of people mention that to us as well. Um, it, but it, you know what? It, re it reminds me a little bit of The Lost World. It's like that yeah. same kind of concept. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that, I think it's something that could speak to a lot of people in that, that medium, but you know, if it, if it happens, that'd be amazing. If it doesn't, then I know there are other big things for it and that's okay. And so and nothing wrong with that. So yes. on that note, I mean, it's here, you got your Kickstarter. It's 10 days to go, nine days to go at this point. Seven, seven, oh, days wow. to go. seven days to go as of the start of this show. Seven days to go start of the show. Okay. So this is a Wednesday. So for those people listening, I, I've talked to the boss of the show. I'm going to probably put the audio up a little early because, you know, there is a campaign and stuff going on. So probably so it'll be five days from the, when the, it airs as an audio. So so seven days right now. Yep, it'll end at uh, 9 p.m. on Thursday the 10th is when it's yep. going to actually end. Nice. Nice. So, like. I, you, you've done a lot of these campaigns now. Like, do they ever get more, for lack of a better term, comfortable? You know, that's actually a really good question. I think that there are some aspects where they do. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the ninth campaign that we've worked on, eight of which are our own. We had one campaign we worked on for someone else. Um, and I think there are certain things that have kind of leveled out, meaning um, the first few campaigns, the highs were super high, the lows were super low. Um, you would basically, you know, Steph would have to get me off of like, you know, to go jump off a bridge watch um, at certain points. Because when, when lows happen in a campaign, it really sucks. It really, yeah. it, it's tough mm -hmm. to be able to take. Um, but as time has gone on, we have kind of just, gotten a little more used to what the peaks and the valleys are. And we just kind of roll with the flow of it. Um, that's what's gotten easier knowing that there's every campaign, somebody that's pledged is going to have an issue um, with in, in they're going to have an issue. Um, life is going to come along. They may have thought they had the money and they don't, as long as they contact us, Hey, we're cool. We can make it work out for them. We can find a way to make it work. Um, mm -hmm setting up a campaign is never easy that's always you have to start from scratch and it's always tough um i would say sometimes i would if you and stuff could you could comment on this too i think a lot of times the most difficult part of putting a campaign together is what are we going to have in this campaign because we always try to look at if you're somebody that's an entry-level person that you want to just get in. It's the first time you've heard about it. What's going to appeal to you? But also on the other side, we say if somebody is our super backers or our ultra backers, we like to call them ultra backers because they are bigger than a super backer normally is. And they're just so big out there. We're like, if these guys come along that have bought everything that we've ever done and they want to go back to campaign, are we going to put something in this campaign that they are going to feel like this is going to be a great addition to all this other gear that I already have? So, so it takes time at times. And, and this campaign, there was some stuff that we, we toiled over what we were going to have in the campaign. And it didn't happen until like the last two weeks before we launched the campaign, getting some of the, some of the support merch together, knowing what we were going to do. Um, and when it clicked, it clicked. And as soon as it clicked, you're like, yep, let's do it. We're going to jump on with that thing. We're going to move with it. Um, but for me, that, that's been the, the more stressful thing is making sure that we have got good, solid 
merch that goes along with the good solid story for the entry level people to come in with. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. And and it does, it, like Matt was saying, it does get easier in a way because I know what those first, it, it's tough when you have somebody back out and you don't know their reasons. It could be the most legitimate reason in the world or they could be a troll. You just don't know. And, and you have to assume that there's a good reason for it. But I remember with the first few campaigns, we would have somebody back out and it didn't even matter the amount. We were like, what do we do? Is it us? What do we do wrong? Oh my gosh, it's, it's the end of the world. And now it's still disappointing, but it's just kind of like, okay, well, you know, you know, and we just try to focus on the positive and not stay, you know, depressed over somebody backing out because every campaign, no matter who you are, has somebody that backs out. It's just part of it. Yeah. Well, it, it's funny because we were talking about what's happened to me, like, uh, like ha just happened to me basically right before it started. And one of the things is, I'm used to it kind of as a freelancer. It's like, yeah, shit is going to happen. It yeah. always sucks. It always does. But the reality, it's, it's the reality. Like if you choose to do this, you realize that there's going to be ups and there's going to be downs. There's going to be like victories and there's going to be defeats and you can let yourself be crushed. And don't get me wrong. I'm sure there are moments you guys do four and five letter words like I do. Right. But oh, when absolutely. it's over, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm afraid to ask who's the big, who's got the big, who's got the who swears the most when that stuff happens. Oh, we are, like no, we are, we are 100 percent so equal in that. Oh, okay, it's, yeah. It's, well, it's so and the funny, funny thing is, I've no, I've started to notice that when I come back from a trip from being around, because we're on we we're on video chat all day working, um, but when we're like around each other for a week and I come back home, my my f bombs have been up substantially. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh man, but it is absolutely even. It's just we 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 bring it out in each other, is what I'm saying. So, so, <laughs> it's so, not him. Uh, okay. it's both I, of I, us. I, I guess it's fair to ask then, Matt. Do you, do you pick up any the, when your does your vernacular slightly alter with profanity with, with after being around her? I think, my, I think I think my huh what levels kind of alter when uh, once we're done being around each other. That's yeah. that's like quote. It's either f bombs or it's like old timey. <laughs> Like, it's just when and if it's if it's like road rage, you never know what it's gonna be. <laughs> oh. Road rage is gonna be paragraphs of some kind of. Uh, hey, I do too. Listen, I'm not saying that. that, 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 that uh, listen, <laughs> does the cement crack on the ground around you when you're swearing? Because if it yeah, doesn't no, quite, no. that it hasn't gotten that far, you're good. You're you're yeah, good. Yeah, we're very I, calm. We're very calm about <laughs> our. our <laughs> My, my dad was a truck driver at one point in his life. So it got to oh, the no. point. Like, like, it, no, it's you, just because he's on the road all the time, right? All the time. Oh, yeah. Sooner or later, it just, it just hits that point. Like, he actually had yeah. to stop driving for about 10 years because, oh, well, you just, you just, it just had, you just had enough. Yeah. It got into the point where it just like literally, like, like someone cut him off. I, I remember he did like a paragraph of swearing. I looked, I swear the ground cracked just a touch. I'm just like, <laughs> you need to stop. <laughs> He realized how bad it was too. It's like, yeah. Dad, you just yeah, like you just like you yeah, you gotta stop, right? So yeah, you stop for about you stop for about ten years, right? So, so yes, just, again, we, we bring it out in each other for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> we're both bad influences. They, yeah, but that's I think but we're that's equal yet. influences. That's what I'm yeah, that's what bad. I said. We both are. It's equal. So we're equal. We're equal. equal. That's not bad. We're not bad influences. We're just equally influential on each other. But no, not that's bad. exactly what it is. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I actually said, like, I just, you know, just thinking of my own siblings, right? I just, I, I, again, it's always, it's not just the good, it's the bad, it's everything. I, I actually enjoy it when you can just be yourself with surround somebody because that's, that's the ultimately the best. That's when you know that the relationship is actually a hundred percent healthy. Yes, Matt can increase your f bomb ratio, and that's all good. And you, and, yes, and I, and that's the old, exactly and the old, what it is. And the, and and and. and, and so wait, does that mean you're the, doing the old time like referential swearing there, Steph? Is that is that your style like that? No, not at all. No, I tease him for his for his uh his um old timey vernacular every now and then. You know, <laughs> I think it's like it's it's like fifty fifty. So you never know what you're gonna get. You're either gonna get, you know, you, you're gonna get obscenities, or you're gonna get like this very nice like proper you something your grandpa would say. <laughs> He owns it. He owns it. It's okay. I, I know. I, 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 I can, I can see. I can see. It's like, yeah, it's true. Like, damn it. <laughs> hey, I'm from the it's south. Man. I'm, from, 
I'm from the South. You got to find a way to entertain yourself by. That's uh, exactly. Oh I, no, you know, absolutely no. It, but I mean, that's that. But honestly, I think I can't think of a healthier sign of a of a, of a good relationship other than yes. you can be yourselves around each other. So that's that's, 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 that's awesome. exactly it, right? So, yep. one last thing: any cool new music you guys have tried uh, listened to since? since the last time we talked to each other yeah um, well i always do a top five metal albums of the year and unless there's some absolute banger that comes out in the next two months which can happen because the last couple of years happened. i had i had stuff that added into my list um right now i think my album of the year is going to be um imperial circus dead decadence uh that's the name of the band out of japan um if you ask what kind of metal they play the answer is yes <laughs> uh, because it. they are all over the place i mean there's like extreme metal blast beats black metal j-pop all kinds of um you know um you know melodic metal uh you know symphonic metal all this stuff in there but they find a way to make it work and um it's it's really good brimer is another band out of finland uh they just came out with another album that's really really good uh, Trollfest came out with uh, with uh, Flamingo Overlord this year, which is one of the most bizarre albums ever. Because that every single good. every single song on the album is either about flamingos or what they're drinking at the time. And there it's is a party no, album. It's like what is, you listen to poolside. Yeah, there is no in between on the songs. It's either flamingos or drinking or both. Yeah. And, and, is there priorities of drinking or over flamingos or flamingos over drinking? Honestly, with well, with knowing Trollfest, those guys just you know probably have a little bit of blood in their alcohol level. But um, <laughs> flamingos, flamingos. Let's put it this way: um, they they had a chance to be uh, to to try out for Eurovision this year, and wow. they actually made the Norwegian show that the winner goes on to Eurovision. And these guys went up there in playing songs full of blast beats and every one of them was dressed up in full flamingo regalia so That's you've right even got now. the drummer actor playing blast beats with his full flamingo suit on so they have completely owned it on this album i'm very impressed but it's a fun album it's, it's one that you want to sing along to it's actually a really good album yeah so so for me it's been stormbound out of israel they're fun okay yeah, they've been fun and crusade of bards out of uh, spain Oh, cool. I, okay. I, I, I'm enjoy. I enjoy their pirate metal. They have a real. They have a good his, like particularly Crusade Bars to do like a historical pirate kind of stuff. The, the song that I really dig was their Northwest Passage. It, it's it's pretty badass epic epic pirate ballad in metal. Cool. I, I, I like the. I dig. I dig the pirate pirate metal. I can actually. Sure. I, 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 well, I I don't know. I might have sent Matt one Matt a song of theirs. I'm not sure. I sent him something. He sent me something back. If not, I'll make sure before it's all said and done. Yeah, whatever you sent me, whatever you sent me back in the day, I definitely listen. When I say back in the day, I'm talking like six months ago. But you yeah, definitely, yeah. You definitely, uh, you definitely, I definitely listen to it for sure. Yeah. So yeah. It, 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 so Steph, if you want, I can send it to you too. It's all yeah, good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. So let's get to the, let's get to it. Here's the Vista Dollar Two. Like I said, I reviewed issue one. It was a cool start to it. It sounded, looked like an awesome little event. So. Where are we in issue two? So in issue two, uh, the apocalyptic event that uh, took place at the beginning of issue one um, has continued to grow. Uh, the catastrophe is worsening, as we say, because of the things that are happening in the skies above and the citizens below. Um, at the end of issue one, uh, there's a call that's been put out by the mayor and the constable in the town of Shadowshaven to try to close these portals that are tormenting the town and changing the town, and the call to action has been heeded by those in the town. Unfortunately, um, we're not sure if those calls to action are compatible or not, because you've got um, some that are siding with the mayor that are trying to be creative to try and come up with machinery that can close these portals, and some have sided with the constable that have formed a militia that are out searching and trying to find anyone that could have potentially um, been the cause of this, or could have um, someone that could have come through a portal and arrest them and, and apprehend them. Um, so that's happening in the town of Shadowshaven. Um, you also get to see, without having there be too many spoilers, you get to see the strange bedfellows that have started to, to align together. People that you didn't really expect were gonna be on the same side of the issue that have all started to come together. Um, one of the things that we saw in issue one 
Michael Isildur, the main character, has been incapacitated. So all these people that are around him, uh, the people that he has helped with are his heirs, uh, the people that have been watching over him and the people that exist with him in the town of Shadowshaven are all now left to try and figure out how they can survive in this crazy apocalyptic event that's happening. So I, I have a question, and, I, I, and this probably sounds like an, maybe an obvious no-brainer. Did, did the last few years kind of influence kind of the various directions of the townsfolk in some ways? The fact that people were looking for different answers to this to this problem. What do you think, Steph? I don't. I don't know if they did. In some ways, well, there, there's it's very tiny, very tiny. We didn't want to, and actually, it's funny because we did ha actually have a conversation at the height of when we were writing this was kind of the height of the pandemic. And um, we said, you know, this is an apocalyptic event that has nothing to do with with illness or sickness or anything like that. So we're okay. We don't have to worry about somebody saying, oh, too soon, or, you know, this is insensitive or anything like that. But there were some tiny little things that, I don't want to say that we drew from it, but we, we just thought about them differently after having gone through uh, the pandemic. And one of the things that we, you know, we talked about, um, they're being trying to have order when there's chaos and people, um, it, you know, in groups panicking. And um, there is actually a discussion about, you know, whether there should be uh, large gatherings, you know, out, outside. And that wasn't anything that we would have ever considered that did kind of find its way into the story. And it's very small. It's not like a huge thing, but it was just something that inspired us because we said, you know, this is, this is, this is what this, this would happen. You know, this is how it would go. Uh, that's just interesting. I was actually more thinking along these lines, though, too. I think, like, we're still, although we are, I think, by and large, through the pandemic aspect of this at this point, we are still going to probably be a few years away from being completely unbiased from our own viewpoints on the pandemic, right? So one of the best things I think about science fiction in general sometimes is everybody comes up with their own solutions, right, in the moment. It's not always necessarily a right or a wrong thing. But more of this is what we think is the right thing to do for whatever the reasons are, right? And, that, and that's what I was really curious about. It was that kind of thinking because definitely when our own real life, that a lot of people came up with different answers, good, bad, or indifferent, right? And I feel like something like like any great disaster, and and your comic is kind of a disaster comic or a crisis comic with a really yes. cool mystery in in, in it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's all I'll say because I don't want to spoil it because I don't want Steph to beat me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all the over here. <laughs> I, 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 I legit, I, I, I legitimately think like Matt, Matt's a fierce dude. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to get on his bad side, but I think you'd be actually, <laughs> you, 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 you'd, you'd scare me probably a little bit more than he does. So <laughs> don't answer that, Matt. Don't answer that. <laughs> 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 Blink twice if you agree. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so I, I'm just, I, actually, just, I think this. So, am I, am I a wise man? Yay or nay? That's all you got to say on that. <laughs> well, yeah, but, that is that is true because I because we did talk about the the gatherings. Like yeah. the thing about this arc is that there's a lot of notes for this arc that were in place from prior to even Steph and I meeting. Um, I could remember um, 2015, 2016, 2017. Um, there were times that I would, I would always just have like a big spreadsheet and whenever I had an idea and whether it was a short-term idea or a long-term in the future, I would always just take some of the ideas and just make sure they were down. And, um, so there's a lot of the ideas that we are utilizing in the perilous prospects and even beyond that started from some, some quick thoughts that were had many years ago. So it was interesting kind of seeing the world around us start to take on the, some characteristics of those, some things we already had planned for the story. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the portals and, and having this tormenting and people having to pay attention and, 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 and think about where they were going and what they were going to do when they left their own house was something that was always planned to be in the story. And then seeing the pandemic come around you're like, uh, what the heck? You're like, you're like, you're borrowing from our story, man. What are yeah. you doing? Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. The it's your fault. Don't steal from us. This is our yeah. idea. Leave it alone. No, <laughs> but no, it, because I, I, th I think there is something, you know, like you said, whatever disasters are, there's something universal about when things get beyond your control, 
how you react and what you think the right thing is, is, is for everybody a very interesting um, question. And like I said, in our, in our case, a few more years down the road, we'll probably be able to actually re-examine it in probably a much more logical way than where we're at now. Um, but for the moment, it's just – actually, I'll ask this. Comic-wise, were you a big fan, Matt? Because I the, the, I, I, cause I know Matt – this was – I don't know how much of Brain Child was initially Matt's ideas pre parallel or you guys coming together. But were you guys – like big event comics fans back in the day, like it's like the Crisis on Infinite Earths, the 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 big, like the bigger events in comics past kind of deal. Honestly, I was not that kind of person when it comes to comics at all. I'm, I've been big into um, movie arcs, video game arcs, things like that. Those are the things that really caught me. Um, like with my my basic comic reading, like I was the guy that would my daughter and I would go to a comic show and we'd go to the dollar bins. And our thing was we had to go dig through the dollar bins and it would, you had to go look for things that were not uh, Marvel or DC and go find the 50 cent issues or the dollar issues that somebody toiled and put all their time and effort and money into that is now a title that's buried in the 50 cent bin that probably stays in somebody's warehouse until the next show and see if we could unearth some gems. So, a lot of the cool issues that I found, I couldn't even tell you the names of them right now, just because I've been so deep into like the Kickstarter world and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But those were the things I was looking for. I was looking for the, you know, what made this person create this issue here? Or why did this issue maybe end up in the dollar or 50 cent bin? Um, was there something that was a fatal flaw to the way it was designed? Was it a publisher thing? Or is it just a great story that's kind of just been lost in this heap of thousands and thousands and thousands of titles? So. That was my thing. I know Steph's probably got a much different answer uh, than I do, but that was from my side. That's where I was at. Yeah, I kind of do. I I got into comics late teens, and so I, I didn't read them as a kid necessarily, even though I, I liked comic characters just from exposure to movies. Um, but I was more into I, – I started as a big DC fan, and I still kind of am a little bit more of a DC fan than a Marvel fan. No, no, no. no. But, it, it's so It's okay. Yeah. Honestly, me too. I have yeah. my reasons. It's person. My reasons a little bit more personal. Um, but you yeah, know, I, I get it. Batman so, was just my first love as a kid, you know, and so like you know my first comic love, and so, um, but I was more into like Hellboy and Watchmen, and still even to this day I am. But um, okay, so it wasn't necessarily the big huge arcs that I was into. I like the more easily digestible graphic novels where I could kind of sit down with a trade and read an entire story and be good with it. Straight up Hellboy, Hell, especially Hellboy, even though it's become much bigger, well-known in other branches, I still think is a little underrated about how good yeah, that actually absolutely. is. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. It's, it's yeah, always yeah. been one of my favorites. Yeah, it's a little underrated. So, no, and and I'd be very curious to look at your pile be, uh, there, uh, Matt, because uh, I, there's some really cool stories from, I, 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 from like the nineties, the thousands and tens that were just gems that were just never discovered. Yeah. So it'd be kind of, kind of cool. So, yeah, I don't, you know what? I have to go back and dig through them. Uh, Cause I know that right now the overwhelming vast majority of comics that I read come from one of two places. And that is from Kickstarter or from scout comics. If it's not one of those two places, All our friend it comics. Is, <laughs> yeah. Very, it's very, no, very I, unlikely yeah. that I'm going to be I, spending a lot of time there just because that's like, I referee a lot of soccer games and people are like, did you catch that soccer game on TV? And I'm like, no, I did not because I spend enough time around soccer the rest of the week with my daughter playing or refereeing that I yeah. do not want to watch another game. Um, yeah. So with the amount of time we spend writing our own titles, reading uh, Kickstarter books that are out there and like, looking at the scout titles, um, it's very rare that I'm going to be able to sit down and delve too deeply into in, into any other arcs that are out there at the moment. I I totally relate. I don't watch television much anymore. Like I like I had to give something up. So it's like I'm either can read comics or books, play video games, and I don't play as much video games as I used to either, yeah. right? Or I can watch television. And I'm at the boy. I got to the boys season three episode two and. I have been there for five for five months. I, I might I might break that I might break that at some point before the Christmas. Maybe during Christmas week I'll watch the rest of it. But it just you don't have time I when am. you're making your own shit. You just it's don't. Not. When you've got 880 podcasts, of course you don't yeah. have any time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't even told you what I'm going to do for my first Kickstarter next year. 
so I, I I'm doing a, my first I'm I'm doing a Dr. Seuss book kind of sort of cool. really. See, in my opinion, Dr. Seuss is one of my, if I were, if I were to give you my three greatest graphic novels, Dr. Seuss would be one of them. Because if you sit there and think about what he does, he is the li he's literally a graphic novelist. His stories are all words and pictures. For sure. So For sure. I I actually did a story about stick figures revolting against their creator, and uh, and so I, I I'm actually drawing I'm actually drawing a one of the covers. I'm, I've actually been quietly approaching a few people to say, hey, would you like to do something like this? I'm hoping. Like I said, I I hope my freelancing goes back up a little bit because that was actually one of the things I was going to do. It's like, hey. I can pay you now to put do this cover and yeah. do this thing, right? Yeah. Now yeah. I can't do, but um, I'm hoping by March next year I'm going to have my first Kickstarter and it's going to be the Stick Figure Revolution. So yeah, oh, that's I know awesome. the well, we, we yeah. look forward to seeing that. Yeah. So, but no, you just when you're creating all this stuff, you don't like. Yeah, like you were I'm saying, not, you know, you have to give up something. I used to be a big gamer, and I just don't have time for it anymore. Video games are one of the things that kind of went. That doesn't mean that I don't enjoy them or enjoy watching somebody else play them. Um, because I've always kind of liked that, depending on the game. What was but, what, what, um, what was your games? Like what was your games of choice? I was a really, really big Bethesda person. So Fallout, Oblivion, Skyrim. I I just played those games obsessively. I was really into Fable. So I liked those types of games. And the thing that that has turned me off personally, I know a lot of people still love them, but I don't like that they're MMOs. I just want to play by myself. I don't want to play with other people. <laughs> you know, unless they're my, I unless oddly, it's my friends. I, 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 I oddly relate to that. I oddly yeah, relate like, to and that. I, I do, I did play a lot of first person shooters too, but I would play with my friends and we would play, you know, like, you know, Rainbow Six and, um, uh, you know, those types of things, play some Titanfall. So I, I really, I, you know, there are the, those nights where I'm like, man, it'd be fun to just, you know, pick up a controller and play for a little while. But, um, you know, eventually one day I'll get back to it. It's it's cyclical, you know? Yeah. My main game back in the day was uh, NCAA Football 14. Me and a lot of the guys that I'm still in contact with actually do a podcast with one of them, uh, CFP Dynasty College Fantasy Football Podcast with Brian McElfresh. Um, we played obsessively. We would play NCAA Football 14. And um, then there was uh, a lot of lawsuits that happened and they had to stop making the game. And now because of a change in the dynamic in the U S um, that game is going to be coming back next year. They're like, are we going to be oh. our dynasties? Are we going to do this? We're going to do that. And I'm like, man, I really want to do that, but I don't know if I can be playing. Yeah. Uh, I don't so, know if I can be playing three games a night anymore. Like I did. Back no, then, I, that, 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 that's probably done. For me, it was street fighter. Tekken, yeah. like those kind oh, of games. Yeah. Yep, Soul Soul I, Caliber for me. Soul Caliber Soul was a Caliber for me as well. well. I I actually at one point was championship good at Street Fighter. One oh, point, oh. Not, not 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 anymore, but at one point yeah. I was that good. I used to, so I ended up sparring with the guy who used to actually won the tournament in the Caribbean when I was living in Windsor back in my college days. I ended up meeting him by accident. We ended up sparring on a regular basis. I was the only one good enough to keep up with him. So, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but. Uh, no, so it's, it's those and JR, like the JRPGs, like much like you, Steph. I'm, I, I, so for me, the games are the Tales games. I love the Tales games; they're just hilarious. And uh, Persona, I love the Persona series. Oh so. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I really also like you know the Mario Kart games. Like I've, I've always had Mario fun with those. Shit. Yeah, and that that to me was one of the most fun games because you, I like games where you can play them and you can be like, okay, hey, we're going to play it. Okay, let's sit down and play. We know this board's going to take three minutes and then three minutes and then three minutes and then three minutes and then three minutes and then, three minutes and then we're done. And not be like, oh, hey, we're going to sit down and play the game. Okay, five hours later, we're going to be ready to actually start playing the game. That's oh, how God. it would be for me. I mean, I would yeah. just lose, I would just lose hours and hours of my day. I, you know, it'd be I, like where it's like, oh, the sun went down. When did that happen? <laughs> you know? That's why I actually stayed away from World of Warcraft. I stayed away from it for that yeah. exact reason because yep. I ended up trying it two out two times, eight hours of my life went down both times. I'm like, no, I can't, I can't play this. It's easy game. to do. It is yes. easy to do. It is. So going back to so you mentioned this earlier, you're doing some of you like unique items for this campaign. So what were the unique items for this campaign? So one of the things that we're really excited about that um, has become a trend for our campaigns, I think this is what, Matt, well, maybe the fourth one that we've done with the work. Fourth or fifth? Probably fifth. Yeah. I think it's the fifth. Yeah, it's been quite a few. Um, our friends at GB Leatherworks, they're um, our good buds, and we do, we've do. we done a lot of shows with them, Harrison Hansen and Martin Irish. 
um, are legit leather workers. And it's become a trend that they have done support merch for us. And we've done everything from little uh, dragon head keychains to massive dragon masks that people can wear that are amazing and ornate. Um, and we've done some, we've done some pouches that, you know, people can use as dice pouches or basically anything. And, um, this time around, we are having them do two different leatherworking goods that I'm really excited about both of them, um, for different reasons. One is they're doing goggles for us, Ooh. which, um, Matt can show right there. That's and amazing. that symbol that you see emblazoned on the side there is our 13 o'clock symbol, which is important and integral to the story. Um, but yeah, that's what they, they're going to come in brown or black right there or eccentric craftsmen, which means it's dealer's choice. They get to decide what kind of crazy colors they want to do. So if somebody's like, surprise me, um, that's what they're going to do. What I can say about these goggles, anyone that's seen Met Night shows, we dress in steampunk or a variation of steampunk. Sometimes we get a little crazy with it, but we always wear goggles. He always wears the top hat. I always wear the goggles. And we've done the route before where I've gotten like the cheapy goggles from Amazon and you can't wear them all day. You, you'll you have a headache. It's like an indentation in my forehead. These goggles that these guys make are so comfortable. I, I say this every time, but it's it's true. I forget that they're on my head. I forget that I'm wearing them. I've gone into stores still wearing them. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I have goggles on my head. So they are, you could legitimately wear these and be okay. They're adjustable. They're just, they're, they're awesome. And they're, I mean, how often can you say that you're owning something that was handmade by leather workers? They're like blacksmiths. It's actually really fascinating to watch them work. Um, but the other leather good that we're doing is ornaments, which I've always wanted us to do. And I'm really excited that we finally found a way to get them. And uh, Matt actually has examples of them. And it comes in a set of three. Ooh. There is the 13 o'clock symbol again. The baby dragon keychain, which we have, well, it's not a keychain, it's just the baby dragon head mm -hmm. um, that we have had for a while now that we started with our medieval fantasy uh, campaign, Tales from Nocturnia, and the little tiny goblin. <laughs> we are <laughs> freaking adorable. In fact, we we had these up. Um, we, we do a steampunk show in Mount Dora, Florida called Renegers, and um, they're right next to us uh, every show. And... Um, and somebody, and we had them up, they, they brought them. And so we had them up just kind of like a preview to show people. And somebody said she wanted them for her hamster. <laughs> we're like, okay. Well, okay, whatever. Sure. We're like, once you buy them, once you buy them, you can do whatever the heck you want. We're like, that's a very yeah. interesting reason. And the funny thing that like we were saying earlier, where we have, we toil over what we're going to do. And then it comes back to something obvious. Like we knew we were going to do ornaments the whole time and we're like we want to do a set of three and we're like we're going to do the baby dragon head and we're going to do the 13 o'clock symbol and what's the other thing going to be and then i don't know why it took the four of us so long yeah, to be like i really did. you know we knew like then we're like yeah we're going to do the set of goggles but then like harrison was like he's like guys i had an idea the other thing we were going to do why don't we do this and he like held up the ba the little baby goggles and he want, he already had this like sales pitch ready and we we're like sold let's do it he's like yeah and if we do this we're like no dude you don't have to go any you don't have to go on any more we're like yeah. that is it we're like why we didn't think about this that is perfect we were overthinking it we yeah, honestly were exactly overthinking it, it. <laughs> or, or overthinking or overlooking like i mean that's yeah, the other thing too. That, yeah both. yeah because it, because the other because the thing is here's the other thing you're caught up so caught up with what you're doing like with yeah. your own projects and properties you sometimes an outsider's perspective is wonderful because they're like, Hey, that really cool thing you do, you should yeah. do that. And you go, Really? Or it's like, You're right. You really should do this cool thing. Yeah. Why didn't you? Like, oh, yeah. That's why, like, sometimes you, you like, it's exactly like you said. Sometimes you're too deeply entrenched in it and you need somebody from outside that goes, like, points out the most obvious thing. And you're like, Oh, yeah, it was right in front of our faces. We didn't even realize. Yeah, and, and and the thing oh. is too, we got we oh, got. Oh, there we go. We can hear you now. <laughs> okay, and the thing is too is that we've got shirts like we did the foil shirts on the last campaign, and people really like the shirts with the foil print on there. But there were some people, including us, that were like, "Hey, we wanted to have a little more usable version of those shirts. People want to be able to go out and just chill and not have to worry about washing their shirts on gentle and hang drying them and all that." So we do have um, steampunk brown and gray shirts with that version of it uh, of this the 13 o'clock symbol 
Uh, for the third campaign in a row, we're doing uh, custom socks. We've got some gear socks that we're doing. Uh, people really love the socks. We we actually had a guy um, a couple of weeks ago that bought some socks from us, and he put a post on Facebook, and he's like, dude, these are the most comfortable socks. These socks are awesome. They're not garbage. I love these things. I would recommend these things to anybody. And people started posting after he posted that of them wearing their socks right then. We're like, great. how cool is this? We had like three or four or five people that were like posting pictures of them wearing our socks at the same time, you know? So, so that, if that's not, if that's not the perfect advertisement, who knows what is. Hey, um, hey, that's how you know you made it. They're wearing your socks. Right. That's right. And we've, got, exactly. and we've got multiple, we've got multiple covers in this campaign. Uh, every cover in the campaign is offered as a metal cover as well. Um, and we always, we always try to make sure that people know that regardless of all the support merch, we feel very confident about the story that's in the book as well. Uh, the first issue was 48 pages. This issue is 56. Uh, we are pretty sure the next issue is going to be even longer than that because of the amount of things that have to be covered in that volume. And we feel very confident about where the story is going, about the character development. And we know that when we start getting into issue three, that a lot of the things we've been setting up, like there's a lot of things we're going to start cashing in those receipts on when we get to issue three. And um, it's going to be, people are just going to be like, man, that crap is straight bonkers that you're doing right there. And um, some of the stuff, even in issue two, uh, there are some deep, deep, deep cuts that um, for someone that is new to the series and the Perilous Prospects, we're not going to say it's going to go over your head because we're going to make sure you have the information that you need to be able to understand what those deep cuts are. We just make sure that that information happens at the end of the book. We do expand and understand and character profiles. We'll put stuff on our website so that if you need to know what the significance of X character or Y character is, you can get it. But we also know if somebody has been a fan from the beginning, kind of like the X files where you could like watch for five seasons and you watch the movie and you see like a character for five seconds. And you're like, dude, that one character was in season two, episode seven for 15 minutes. The whole series has been turned on its head. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, we have a couple of those things that are going to happen in, in, in uh, issue two. And for people that have been reading for a while, they're going to be like, holy crap, I can't believe that they did that. For people that are new, we're going to make sure you have that information so that you can understand why these are significant characters that you're going to be able to say, okay, some crap is really going down much more, even more than I thought it was when I saw the other swerves in these issues. So let's least do a couple interesting questions because this has gone like, so for folks or anyone listening, when I reviewed issue one, that was my first introduction to the Hairs of Isildur. Then, and then I, I got to read more of the series. It's a dense universe, right? It is a very right. dense universe. So here's the question. You've done, both of you, and honestly, you both should be really proud of yourselves for this. Thank You've you. lasted longer than quite a few comic books, even from the big two, legitimately as well now. Like you have enough material that that you can literally call back to your stuff now. Did you ever imagine you'd get to that point? I know the kind of person that I am, and I know that I'm I'm patiently impatient or impatiently patient. Here's why I say that. I was a metal musician for many years. There was a lot of material that was written back in the day that I really liked didn't really go anywhere. Like it just kind of sat on my computer or sat in folders. And some of those lyrics, some of that music, the, the start of Heirs of a Sealed or even in and of itself came from, from me wanting to get back into music that I had stepped away from for seven to eight years. So being able to see some of those things musically come together on the two albums that we have now with Heirs of a Sealed or I was patient knowing that the right time was going to happen. When it comes to errors and the arcs that we have, there's things that, that I took notes on five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, that I'm like, when the time is right, it's going to be new to somebody. And we're going to know what the right time is for that specific thing to come out. Nobody cares that a note was taken in 2014, 2016, 2018. They're just going to care if it's the right time for it to be released. Now um, there are a lot of notes because when uh, when the Crossroads Conundrum was done, the first arc, when that one was done, I opened up the entire folder of notes and showed stuff. That was the first time anybody outside of me was ever shown all the notes that I had 
for the arcs, for the stories. There was no, I need to surprise this person. It was, I've got so many notes here that are, that I thought were really good. Let's make sure we make good stories out of these notes. And there was a lot of things I had notes for that even stuff was like, I don't think we want to go down that path. That's going to be a derivative line that may not go the direction you want. So mm -hmm. we've been patient and it's, it's fun being able to see these things come about. It all just comes from making sure there's a fan base out there that cares about, about continuing these things on. If there's somebody out there that wants to know what's going on in the story, um, then it's going to be easy for us to continue on the story. And it, it makes us thankful because we've got a lot more story to tell. Because, and we always try to make sure that there's going to be open ends. We've got some stuff in this campaign specifically. People can, can pick a tier to be able to get drawn into issue three. For the first time ever in our add-ons, you can get picked to, you can pick a add-on to get drawn into a secret project. We can't tell people what it is, but somebody can say, hey, I want to get drawn into issue three and I want to be drawn into the secret project. And there's some people that have said that and half of those secret tiers have already been taken because people trust that we're going to do something fun with it. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we can't tell people what it is. We can't tell people why it is because we don't want to spoil it for ourselves because it's going to be fun for them to be like, surprise, look at this thing we just did. And um, we just know that we have to be patient. There's a lot of things that, that Steph has started, that I've started, that for one reason or the other have been put on the shelf. And if and when the right time comes for those things to be pulled back down off the shelf and retooled and put out, then we're going to do it. Until that time comes, we're going to come up with new stuff and fun stuff and see where we go from there. Okay. So with what's come out now, what's, I mean, this is for both of you. What's been your favorite, mo like your favorite, when you told that moment, what was your favorite, what's been your, like your favorite reveal, surprise? It could be anything you've done. But actually, again, it, it may, if you don't want to spoil the current series, I get it. But even from the old series. I'm going to so let you for, that first stuff for sure. Well, for me, because it's interesting. We, it's, a, it's a very interesting. We have a lot of people ask us how it works where they're, we're both working on something that Matt originally created on his own before he mm -hmm. ever even knew me. And um, fortunately, we just work so well together that it, it's it's actually it's really easy. It's it's I, I think it's a shared level of respect. I respect that this was his story to begin with and his ideas. And I try to respect each and every one of those uh, enough to know that I offer suggestions when I feel like it needs to be offered because um, it really is a, a combined creative effort now. And he respects my opinion enough to listen to it because it's really hard. And anybody that's a creator knows this because anybody that is creating something is going to have an editor of some sort along the way, even if you're just having a beta reader and they're going to suggest something. And it's hard to not take it personally where you're like, well, wait a minute. That was, I like that, you know. Um, but anyway, in the early days, uh, when I was first introduced to Ayers in the first story arc, uh, this was, I mean, this was very early on before we ever even really had completely formed in symmetry creations, he would uh, read the the issues to me as they came out. And I remember there was one moment where I mean, see, he's smiling because he knows exactly what I'm going to say. Where this is literally the thing I was going to say too. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, he read, he read, he, he read a part to me and I, I, I was so, like I didn't know how to react, and so I because it was on video chat, I like ran out of the room. <laughs> so let me tell you what happened here. So because Ayers has a metal side of things, and they have the comic side. Issue six of the Crossroads Conundrum has the first exposure to the Kingdom of Nocturnia because the King from Nocturnia gets pulled through a portal. So. Steph was involved in the production of the music video for the song Love Long Betrayal. The video for that song tells the story from one perspective. Issue six, the king has been pulled through into the heirs of a Silder universe. And he tells that story in a completely different way. So Steph was like, is one of these things true? It was the first time, because everybody up to that point in errors was pretty straightforward in that you yeah. knew what they were saying was the truth. They were all, regardless of where they came from, one of the characters had been in prison for like a decade. 
but you knew that they were all being honest with one another. And there was no hint that anybody might be dishonest with anyone else. And so when this issue came out, because at this point I showed her the issue and she was like, she literally ran out of the room, ran down the hallway, came back. She's like, I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> and I was like, Everything yes. I thought I knew was wrong. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. No, oh, I, oh, actually, and actually the thing is not necessarily, and that's the, that's the real thing that baked your noodle. The king could be lying too, right? And then, yes. now it's like, yes. right? Right, right, and right. The thing that I love about that is it's still kind of ambiguous in some ways. It's, but that's the best part. Like, yes, like actually, I love, I, uh, I love stuff like that. I, I always have, um, as long as, because uh, there's been some movies that have capitalized on that a little too much, and you're like, this wasn't even an ending. But I love the ambiguity where it's open to interpretation, and you've been given enough information that you could you could see how either scenario or multiple scenarios could all be true. I think I think it's best when there's an ending, like an actual legitimate yeah. ending. There has yeah. to be like something. Like here's the thing: if I'm coming into your story, I'm taking an investment of my time to be yes. going through whatever I'm going through. So I should get an answer. Yeah, I agree. Right? I agree for sure. But, yeah, you don't want a uh, Sopranos fade to black kind of ending. <laughs> well, no, or or uh, or maybe I like the movie, but Inception does have a little bit that's of that. Like, I, exactly yeah. what I was thinking. That's yeah, a, that's yeah. what I was literally going to mention that. But every time I do, people like jump my case because they're no, like, the you know, movie, and I'm I like, get what no, people. I, look, look, I get why people like it, but there's also yes. there's also there's something to be said about you know. You can be too clever for your own good. Sometimes the dream yeah. within the dream or what is the correct answer yeah. is a cop-out. It can be a cop-out. It's much yes. more interesting, though, when, for example, I'm character A and I have a point of view. And you're character B and you have a point point of view. And Matt's character C and he's got a point of view. And we're all right. Yes. That is yes. much more interesting. Yes. Because well, you know what, though? That Now that you say that, that's actually very interesting because that's kind of where we're at in Shadow's Haven where yeah. there's there's nothing wrong with any of the actions that any person in Shadows Haven is taking from a a general standpoint everybody has the 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 right heart in mind to want to preserve what normalcy is there the problem comes in when they are all trying to do something at the same time that could be that could be in conflict with one another um a good example not going to name the show but steph and i were involved with a show where it was during the pandemic mm -hmm. and they wanted to make sure that they had the show locked down um where everybody was doing the right thing and you could tell there was this group that ran the show and one person had a good idea another person had a good idea another person there was probably eight people legitimately that all had good individual ideas that were going to be good to implement for the show. But when you put all eight of their ideas together, nobody had the foresight to say, these things do not work together. You are making this overbearing. If, if somebody wanted to attend the show, they had to get a COVID test from a specific group that was there at the show, wait outside in the parking lot in the cold for an hour, to be able to gain access to the show. So if you were with your friends and you were like, hey man, why don't we go over to X show and you got to X show and you found out like, nah, dude, let's just go over and hang out in the, uh, at the, go to the mall. You know, so all the ideas were good that they had, but trying, but too many at the same time became a disaster. And that's yeah. what's happening in Shadow Saban. Too many ideas trying to be implemented at the same time is a disaster and they're all kind of getting in the way of one another not realizing that until maybe it's too late. So I'm going to end this with a compliment. But I'm going to just say a point here before I get to this. I, I, what I have generally found with most people, it's not everybody, but most people, everybody's trying to do the right thing, at least from what they see to be the right thing. What makes it interesting, or what makes it interesting is what well, might work for me may not work for you. And there, there, and there might be reasons for that. Right. Yes. And the real, that's where the conflict that's where good science fiction conflicts come from. Matt, I'm going to accuse you of being a science fiction writer. Are you okay with that? 
I'm absolutely okay with that because this is an apocalyptic sci-fi tale set in a steampunk yeah. world right now. Yeah, yeah. So no, but that, but, that, but that's, in my opinion, that's the best science fiction. It's not good versus evil necessarily. It's the fact that you can have good people with good ideas in conflict with each other because these ideas don't work well together. And sometimes one, and sometimes and this is where it gets if you if it's really good is if one idea if both ideas are equally good, how do you choose? Right. Yeah. That's an issue. Right. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. That's the best stuff. That's the best science fiction stuff, in my opinion. So, but then you have to give an answer. And then, yes. but, right. Then you have to give an answer and then let people decide. And then when it's over, let other people, maybe they should have gone that way. But that's the best kind of fiction. So, well, one of, well, one of the things we always try to tell people when, uh, when somebody's asking about writing advice, we always say you have to know what your concept is. You have to know what your climax is and you have to understand how long it's going to take to get from point A to point B. Um, every story doesn't have to be 12 issues, 15 issues. You could have a one page story, a five page story, but know where you're going. A lot of people are like, Hey, I've got a great idea for a story. And you're like, okay, what is it? They're like, yeah, there's going to be this superhero and he's got this power and he can do this. And I'm like, okay, there's your concept. What's your climax? Where are you wanting to take this thing? Because that's yeah. not a story. That's a character concept. That character has to have a, a story, an arc that he's going to be in, regardless of what this concept is. So if you don't have that concept, which there's been um, some shows that we've watched recently where you get to the end and you're like, that's it? You're yeah. like, what? where is this even going? You're like, this doesn't even make any sense. What a waste of my time. It doesn't go anywhere. And you're like, that had a great concept, but it just didn't go anywhere. And you're like, we want our, our readers and our fans to have trust in us that we know where we're going, that they can be along for the ride, no matter how many issues it is, and know that there's going to be things that are going to be satisfying in every issue. There's going to be reveals in every issue, but there's going to be new questions and new doors that are going to open every time. So every issue, you're going to feel like you, you get a little bit of satisfaction, but you're like, oh, crap, what about that other thing? Yeah, and and actually going one step further, this is why if I this is why when I do watch television, I prefer like the animated stuff a little bit more now because most of the time, not not again, not always, but most of the time, you get more attention to detail like that. Whereas in live action, sometimes that that I, that gets weird, and and there's reasons. And that's and that's all we're gonna say. Is that there's reasons. But all of which to say is, it sounds like you guys are really excited for this. You guys are actually having. You both sound like you're having fun. So that's, and that's, 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 first, that's the first thing. So, okay. So I'm going to ask maybe the hardest question. I, I have, a, I have, I would add, there's a third criteria to every story. And it's this, you want to make your audience feel something, right? You might make it right. Right. It can, you make them laugh. You can make them cry. You can make them like angry, thoughtful. What are you going for? What's what, like, what, what do you, what have readers told you about this story has made them feel so far? Well, I know what what Matt's answer probably would be, and one of the things that we we say a lot is it's kind of our catchphrase is that we want to create characters that people can relate to and universes that people want to escape into, and we feel that both are are equally important. We want people to be able to relate to characters, even if it seems like they would never be able to relate to you know a a, a guy that was in prison or you know, um, and we want to create universes and worlds that even in the midst of all this chaos that's happening is still fascinating for people and they can think okay you know what would i do if i if i finally if i suddenly went through a portal and found myself there um but my my own personal answer that i love and this is i'm a huge horror fan and one of the best definitions of horror that i've ever heard is that somebody said you make somebody care about the characters and then you put them through hell and yeah. um it doesn't necessarily need to be that extreme, but you want to you you want to make people care about the characters, and you want to see them struggle in some way, shape, or form, and get through those and have you know triumphs and trials and tribulations because um, we all do, and that's another way that you're going to relate to the characters. But you're going to care about them even more if they overcome those. Yeah, I always I'm always looking for um, you know I always want people to feel like there's some kind of hope. Uh, in any story that we write, um, I want them to be able to find find something good in a character. I find a way to be able to believe in a character. For me personally, 
I always have more of a difficulty writing a character that is hopeless, writing a character that that you just want to hate that character. Um, I want there to be like, even if a character is like just the worst character in the world, I always want you to be like, yeah, but I can understand this one aspect of them. Even if 99% of them completely sucks, you know, there might be one little bit of them that you do are like, that's kind of cool. And then you kind of feel bad before even liking that character at all, because you know, that character is a piece of crap. That's what makes the best villain in my opinion. Well, but- well, see, I, so there's a line, and then here's the line, because I tried to doing a noir story once upon a time, and the main character, I lost respect for the main character, right? That's the thing. I, I think I think the thing is when you make an unlikable character, I think it's really cool that you make them unlikable, but you have to find a way to respect them, and I think yeah. those that that humanity, that humanity of, hey, they like they even say this, hey, they're like this dog, right? For all the monstrous things he did. He loved his dog. Yeah. <laughs> right? right. Sometimes I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah. Sometimes it is. That's all. And that's all you need. Right. Something that's like, Hey, he's still, or she's still a human being. Yeah. I mean, at least a little Absolutely. bit. Right. At least a little bit. Yeah. Well, well guys, I think we have an interview here. What do you guys think? I think so. Oh, I think yeah, we, we, too. we always, we always like coming on your show. Cause you always ask great questions and you really kind of dive deep, which we really appreciate. Absolutely. The one thing I do want to make sure that we say before we get off of here, uh, for those that are listening to this live, not for those that are going to listen to the audio version, for those listening to this live, uh, we have two different cross promotions that are going on right now with one with three other campaigns, one with one other campaign. Uh, we've got a quad promo campaign going on with Lori Foster at Unlikely Hero Studios on Medusa with Charlie Stickney at White Ash Comics with the game and with Ryan Cummings at Skeletal Press with Reyna. If you back all four of those campaigns at a physical level, We've got a full-size metal print with an exclusive piece of art that's got one character from all four uh, campaigns, badass women that are in all four campaigns. Syndrome from Heirs of a Sealdor is the badass female that's on this metal print from ours. Um, Lori's campaign ends on November 4th. Ryan's ends on November 5th. Ours ends the 10th. Uh, Charlie's ends on the 16th. So that's something, if you're a collector and you want to get a piece of badass art that is going to be very very rare on a metal print uh you want to get there back all four of those campaigns which like i said some of them are ending two days from now uh the other one that we have we've got docs mad lab games and uh they've got a 5e uh D &D adventure um called trials of the bell witch and if you back both of our campaigns even at a digital level they are going to add something in on their side uh to their 5e adventure that is heirs inspired and um, if you back our campaign at a physical level, we'll add something in to go look at that as well. But we wanted to make sure that we made to make sure we plug those because um, we've had a lot of fun working with all those um, those teams on those books. And even if you are like, hey, that's too much uh, for me to go back all these campaigns, go find one of them and go back it. Go find one of them because they all deserve to get some additional exposure. And we really want to see every one of those campaigns succeed. All right. I think then... We should just do it properly. Uh, as the trained professionals, I am. I should have asked for this prior to the to the interview. You got your Kickstarter link somewhere? Absolutely, man. Do you uh, you want me to try and throw it in the private chat? You want me to? Uh... Yeah, private chat. Try to private chat it to me. Like I said, guys, Absolutely. I'm a trained professional. They even gave me an award for this somewhere. <laughs> somehow, somewhere. <laughs> and then you guys do the do the proper plug when it wants to put it up there, and then we'll wrap up. Sounds good. Yeah, sure, good. sure. It's taking just a little bit longer because I'm on my tablet, but it, it, it's all good. I understand. Like I said, for whatever reason, my Facebook was taking forever to load up. With there we go. Guys. There you go. In the private chat. Just give me a second here. Uh-huh. Da -da. Come on, folks. See, I almost know what I'm doing. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. All right, go. Got, so before before we wrap up, so I guess we got to do this properly. This is Steph Cannon and Matt Knowles. This is their story, Hairs of Isidore. What is the pitch for issue two, the official pitch? The official pitch is it's an apocalyptic sci-fi story set in a steampunk world. The catastrophe in Shadows Haven worsens because of the skies above and the citizens below. If you want the longer pitch. Um, so uh, the longer pitch is that uh, this is a... After the catastrophic events that erupted across Shadows Haven, alliances have been formed and secrets are being uncovered all in the name of saving their village and their heritage. 
but will some take their quest to find truth for those that cause the catastrophe too far? Spoiler alert, we assure you that they will. <laughs> All right. And, and, and uh, like I said, and Steph, Steph's actually kind of like, like, like doing the Mr. Mr. Burns excellent thing kind of yeah. going there. But ladies and gentlemen, that is their Kickstarter. Support it now. I can honestly tell you these these two put together amazing books. They could really, really do. And you should definitely go check them out and back it up. And also their music as well. Their music is actually pretty badass as well. So that would definitely check that out. All right. Beyond that, folks, I'm doing I do advertising service videos, audios, words, and pictures with projects, brands, and yourselves. You can definitely take a look at that right now for more information. And that will do it. I got a Chad Perkins tomorrow night. I always love talking to Steph and Matt. Definitely support their books. Thanks for everybody watching, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Stay inspired. Keep shining in the dark. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.